Hey guys, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria, and in this video I'm going to be discussing metabolic damage, specifically what it is and how you get it. So a lot of people don't believe that metabolic damage exists, and it's because it's not recognized as an actual medical term, but if we were to consider what it is as a whole, then anybody uh, would be able to recognize that metabolic damage does in fact exist. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what exactly it is. So um, first off, the, the metabolism is simply the rate at which an organism functions. Um, and that is really a broad term for how we function as a whole, meaning how we produce energy, how our digestive system functions, how we're able to heal, um, how we're able to detoxify and eliminate toxins from our body, um, how our heart works, how our muscles work, etc. That's all um, within the group term of metabolism in terms of how we function. So ideally a high functioning or a good metabolism is one that um, is a body that's metabolically efficient, meaning that all systems within the body are functioning at their most optimal level and that um, is looked at as efficiency. So something that we can compare it to would be a vehicle. Um, a vehicle, when it's brand new right off the lot, nothing is wrong with it. But over time, um, it breaks down and you have to get it repaired. And though that breakdown of the vehicle uh, can be viewed as metabolic inefficiency because uh, the breakdown of the vehicle actually hinders the vehicle's functioning. So that's what metabolic damage is, is it's metabolic inefficiency. So really, it's anything that causes the body to not perform at its most optimal level. So that's really what metabolic damage is. And then it opens up the gate for all the things that cause metabolic damage. So now that we understand what metabolic damage is, um, and again, I'll just reiterate it, it's, it's a health disturbance. It's an imbalance within the system that interferes with the body's ability to function at its highest level per your genetic makeup. So we are limited in a sense um, to what we're capable of um, per our genetics, but everything else can be controlled via diet and lifestyle habits. So those are the primary uh, factors that affect the way our metabolism functions and whether we have metabolic damage or whether we're experiencing metabolic efficiency. Okay, so let's talk about the causes of metabolic damage. So the primary cause of metabolic damage is stress. Um, stress on a vehicle, and that's what causes a vehicle to break down over time. Stress on the human body uh, is what causes us to become metabolically inefficient, as well as susceptible to uh, whatever diseases you know, we are prone to uh, per our genetics and, and things like that. So uh, I'm going to list off some uh, things that actually cause uh, the stress to accumulate within our system that interferes with its ability to function um, optimally. So we have insufficient calorie intake, insufficient carbohydrate intake, a high protein, high fat diet, a high salt diet, not enough fiber, insufficient nutrient intake, stimulant use like caffeine, nicotine, we're looking at like cigarettes, uh, coffee, um, there's a lot of dietary supplements that contain uh, stimulants within them, alcohol and recreational drug use, lack of sleep, dehydration or not drinking enough water, too much or too little exercise, lack of vitamin D and vitamin B12, uh, an increased exposure to toxic substances, whether it's through the air we're breathing, the environment we're working in or living in, uh, whether it's in the food we're eating. So um, toxic compounds will include pesticides, chemicals, preservatives, food additives, um, and then we have all the uh, pollution and junk that's floating around in the air as well. So 
those are all the uh, primary factors that cause stress on the system and cause metabolic damage. So we're not looking at just one factor here. It's a combination of inadequate dietary and lifestyle habits. So I'm not going to talk about each and every one of those specifically. Just know that those are the factors that contribute to metabolic damage. I did do a video on the six fundamentals of optimal health. Um, and those are the fundamentals that you want to follow in order to restore your metabolism after it's been damaged. I'll put a link for that video in the description below of this one. It gets into detail about uh, proper diet and lifestyle habits that we can follow in order to optimize our health and metabolism. So let's talk a little bit about what actually happens in the system when it's encountering metabolic damage. So I'll use a situation where we have a person named uh, Sally and she is following the standard American diet. It's high in fat, high in protein. Uh, she's still eating carbohydrates, but her calorie intake is um, not as lower than it should be um, per her body weight and age and uh, per her BMR. Um, and uh, she also smokes cigarettes and she drinks a lot of coffee. So this is, um, you know, a typical woman in America where they're somewhat calorie conscious, but they're, they're um, being calorie conscious through portion controlling their food. Um, and they're not addressing the macronutrient composition of the diet or the nutrient composition of the diet in general. So I'm mostly going to be talking about um, dietary factors here in terms of metabolic damage. So all the things that Sally is doing to her system is causing her system to weaken and to break down, primarily because she's not taking in enough carbohydrates and she's not taking in enough nutrients in order to supply her system with the energy and nutrition it needs in order to heal. She's also, let's say, only getting five hours of sleep a night and she's only drinking a half a liter of water a day. So. What is occurring in Sally's body is she's dehydrated. Her metabolism is slowly going down and down and down because she's getting the majority of her calories from protein and fat. And she's also not eating enough calories in general. So that combination is going to make her system uh, very prone to fat storage, especially when she starts to increase her calories once again. So when we enter into the phase of metabolic restoration where we start to heal our metabolism. That's why people, um, there's a reason why people gain weight, whether they're calorie restricting prior or not calorie restricting prior. There's so many factors involved that um, create that uh, effect and it's necessary for healing. So in order for Sally to start reversing the metabolic damage that's in her system, again, I'll just briefly talk about the life or the dietary factors. So consuming too much fat and protein in your diet automatically lowers your metabolic rate. Why does it do that? Because fat and protein aren't designed to be used for energy production. But when they have to be used for energy production in the absence of an a not enough calorie or carbohydrate intake, we start to convert them into fuel, but this process is very energy inefficient and extremely toxic to the system. It causes a situation known as ketosis that um, increases dehydration from the system because the toxins released from ketosis have to be diluted and eliminated uh, very quickly from the body. And then <clears throat> uh, the because there's not enough energy coming in, that her metabolism is just slowing down and slowing down and slowing down and slowing down, even though she's eating, let's say, 2,000 calories a day. She's just not getting in enough carbohydrate calorie energy to be turning her energy metabolism cascade. So we have to have enough glucose present to create energy within the system and when we're having to create it from fat and protein it slows the system down so it's just like in a vehicle you're using the wrong kind of fuel so and that in itself can damage your vehicle it just 
like creating fat and protein for energy within the human body damages it as well. So everything Sally's doing to her body is damaging it. It's damaging her kidneys, uh, putting stress on her heart, and all of this interferes with her ability to heal and maintain homeostasis within her body or balance. So as a counterproduct of trying to cope with all the stress in Sally's system, her adrenals start to release excess amounts of cortisol, which is a stress hormone to help manage what's going on. And that in itself will cause adrenal fatigue. Uh, her system's already extremely dehydrated. So her body's starting to concentrate all of these toxins within it because it doesn't have the energy, the nutrients or the water in order to process them out. She's also not sleeping enough. So she's not able to de-stress her system and start to heal it. Uh, so she's essentially just chronically damaging her body and which results in metabolic damage. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope that made sense. Uh, metabolic damage does exist. It is very real. 99% of the people living in America have it to some extent. Um, and it's an inability to heal the system due to the amount of damage that is being done by the dietary and lifestyle factors that we're following on a daily basis. So if you'd like more information about metabolic damage, you can always leave a co comment or a question down below. I'll get to them. You can also contact me privately through my website, www.nutritionbyvictoria.com. If you think you have metabolic damage and you want to look into restoring yourself. So um, I'm going to be making another video on how to restore metabol or restore your metabolism after you have damaged it. So stay tuned for that one. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.